Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you guys doing? Good, good. 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 Glad to see you guys here. How, how you guys doing out there in the, the good old Dallas area? Doing great. I good. Mean, pretty yeah. good, yeah. We're doing, so. we're doing pretty good. We had a pretty good summer. September's doing okay, and, um, you know, we're not getting – as much work compared to obviously the, the the peak summer season, but um, of course we're doing we're doing uh, we're doing good. Um, but I guess uh, if you uh, just if you want to kind of explain one of the main reasons why we're on this call today, and then we can elaborate from there. Yeah. Um, so you know, essentially, we're in we're in Fort Worth right now. We're doing moves more or less all over DFW. Um, we have been given an opportunity to um, basically buy our dream property. Uh, a little bit ways outside of uh, about two and a half hours outside of DFW. <clears throat> yeah. Um, which it um, for a very, very good price, but um, <clears throat> so essentially, but we're kind of just wondering. Um, uh, yeah. So it's, it's in this little town called Breckenridge. It's uh, about an out, like an, in an hour in each direction, there are towns of about uh, 125,000, 150,000 people. Um, that we would be willing to travel to, to, to go do moves and whatnot for, not to mention there's, um, uh, a whole bunch of small, like smaller lake towns in the area where people have money and they have, um, <clears throat> lake houses and whatnot to, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of moving companies around them and whatnot. So I guess our main question is, okay, yeah, if we, you know, we know that we will not get enough business in a town of 5,000 people would we would we be able to somehow make it work being close to two moderate sized metropolitan areas plus the surrounding lake towns do you think you know um i mean i'm in a i'm in a city area that has um on in the the greater metropolitan area where i'm at mm -hmm. we have right around 300 you depending on who's counting and where you're getting the information it's about mm -hmm. 300,000 people in the greater metropolitan area where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, can you do okay in that area? You could do okay. You could get business. Are you going to be able to sc scale and expand? That's going to be a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, reason, so what I did is I had to expand my horizons. I'm in a, you know, definitely not in a state as large as Texas, obviously. Um, but we had we had uh, basically a bunch of metropolitan areas within an hour's drive of mm -hmm. where I'm at that formed like basically a, a, a rectangle, like each of those cities formed like a corner of a rectangle. So it made sense for me to be able to go to those cities around those and those cities each were like one of them was the second largest city in Michigan, which was Grand Rapids, Michigan. Right. Um, we did not go into Detroit, although Detroit was about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on what part. Um, I really didn't want to go into Detroit just because of the logistics and the gas prices and stuff. It just made it, um, you know, and then when you add in time, you know, because you're paying your crew, it just didn't make it profitable unless you're doing really larger, larger moves. Um, and, if you know, moving business is, is predominantly going to be your smaller-ish kind of moves right you could do quite well on the big local moves but it, it's it's just going to be a lot difficult to get those jobs um so i stuck i stayed away from that so that was my personal radius right mm -hmm. so you've got a couple of towns that are 125 each that's 250 to 300,000. you would need to expand your reach now, let me ask you this. Do you have somebody that you know and trust that is well-trained, that is loyal, that could run um, run the, the business up there in Fort Worth um, to run that as a GM, and then you guys move to your dream party a property, and then you just basically have two locations? Is that something that you've considered? Is that something that's within the wheelhouse? I mean, like we, I mean, my, my main mover, um, <clears throat> he, he's a great mover. He's been moved in the business for over 20 years. Um, very good people, the whole bit, but, um, with that, he's a very good helper, but he doesn't have, um, you know, he, he's got issues with his license. So I can't have him drive any of my trucks. Uh, I mean, cause initially like if his, if his license was good and you know, he knows how to drive box trucks, I've seen him do it, but 
you don't have a valid license, so I can't, you know, <laughs> basically put him on the road with, with you know, in the risk of like something happening or somebody even hits our box truck while he's in it and, mm-hmm. you know, something happened to him. So <clears throat> um, he is the main person I trust, but in terms of running the business while we are two hours away in another city, uh, uh, as of right now, no, I guess to answer your question, I don't, I don't have anyone to fully run and operate the trucks and everything else here we're, we're pretty it's just you know husband and wife family business you know i got i got a few good guys in my crew we have one truck um we've upgraded our truck from the crappier one we've had last year to our you know newer frontliner m226 footer so with the lift gate so we're we're making progression but i'm just not that big yet to because we've had that people we've had people actually ask us that actually we i think you posted on the his uh the seven figure movie yeah. academy the question like hey does anyone do good in a small town they said the same thing like yeah just keep one truck there and one truck and break and like say, we have one like, truck. Well, yeah, so- we only have one truck so so right. uh, yeah i guess long story short no as of right now we don't have anyone that we can um leave behind the this part of the business to here so we can expand out there so okay well i mean because you don't want to lose your core business yeah right um and two being two hours, two and a half hours away, that's really not going to make it feasible to live in your property, right? Mm-hmm. If you go to the new property and be able to run a business in Fort Worth, right? It just it just right. doesn't make that feasible. It can be done, but you're you know you're looking at you know five hours on the road just 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 traveling back and forth. Um, if you're going to keep the one up there in, in Fort Worth, right. right? You're looking at four to five hours just on the, you know, the commute. Um, that's, you know, you start your day off at 8 a.m. You know, you're leaving your house at six o'clock in the morning, right? You're not getting home. If you end off at five, you're not getting home until almost eight o'clock. You know, that's, that would be exhausting. Can it be done? Yes. Can you hustle and do that? Yes. Um, does that make it? Um, but what's what's the time loss between that travel time? How much work could you have done in that time that you're traveling back and forth? How many jobs could you have booked? How many estimates could you have done? You see where I'm saying? Now, would you be able to to survive um, in the that new new property, that ideal property? Would you be able to survive? Probably, but you're not going to have the same scalability, right? You're going to plateau very quickly, right? Now, if it's just you two and maybe one guy down there, okay, maybe that's that's enough for you guys. But I, I find it hard to believe that you started this business just to do okay, right? right? I mean, did you really just start the business just to create yourself a job? Because if that's all, then you go to go to work for somebody. Really, I think if I'm if I may be so bold, I think you started this job so that you guys could have financial freedom, time freedom, you know, lifestyle freedom, right? You didn't start it to just have a job, right? Okay. If you go to that new spot, just based on my own personal experience, all you're going to have is just a job, right? You're not going to be able to expand further than that right i don't know the the area that well so just based on what you're telling me i just don't see that you're able to be able to expand and scale the business that you would want to and become as successful and get that freedom that you're looking for you could probably do probably really well in that area because there's probably not maybe one two moving companies down in those areas if that right so Mm -hmm. you would be the the guys right you guys got a great website it's a beautiful website right um i would change the headline your headline sucks but uh, <laughs> but your website's beautiful it's gorgeous right um you know i don't know how your seo is but you if you took that website and took it down to the area you're at you could probably just blast off mm-hmm. but again are you going to have the are you going to have the amount of people in that area that's going to be moving i just i i don't know based on my experience that's a that would that would say no i don't want to do that mm-hmm. right so if i were in an area that's in lansing right 
I wouldn't if it was just the Lansing area, Lansing, Michigan area that I was in. I wouldn't want to start a moving business in this area. One, there's so much so much competition, but there's just not enough population in this greater city area to really be conducive for a moving company with all the competition that there is to be sustainable and for me to scale. Right. Right. Um, that's why I suggested if you could. Now I understand that the guys, the guy that you have up, up it right there now that's loyal, he knows what his business, but could, is there a way that you could hire somebody to be a general manager and have it, that guy at like the kind of like tag team kind of thing. Like one guy be the operations and him, you know, and him being the, him being the operations, the other guy being the, the organization kind of thing. I mean, we, we can probably figure something out. I guess, I guess the, um, um, as of right now, like, I mean, just like with any kind of starting moving business, we're only, you know, we have one truck, we're only making so I mean, we're, we've been able to generate somewhere between what, Thirty to forty thousand dollars a month, gross. You know what I mean? If for for one truck, so we've been doing pretty good. That's in terms pretty good. Of that. Yeah. So, for, but um, I, I just don't know if that with with the amount grossing that much, if if it's worth it right now. I guess you would say unless we get a sec. I mean, if because we were just talking about this, like if we got a second truck mm-hmm. or invest in a second truck, you know, we were planning on doing that next year, but obviously we got to get a more a little more money in the marketing so we have enough leads to justify having two trucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that would be more of an option for that, but in, until we get that second truck, it would be for me to hire a general manager to run this part of the operation while uh, we're running another part of the operation somewhere else. It just doesn't, as of right now, it's just not in the books for us until um, we get that second truck. If that, if, I mean, you know, that makes sense. If I'm, if I'm wrong, you know, please, you know, let me know. But uh, <laughs> well, I don't know your 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 t- entire scene, so I'm going to have to trust with what what you're saying. And quite honest, based on my experience, I, I would I would agree with you, right? You really don't really want to expand to a second location until you're doing at least a half a mil to a mil, right? right. Um, but it probably you're probably doing what right right around three hundred k a year growth, yeah, somewhere between three that's what we're on track for, yeah, yeah. right now. Okay, yeah. So that I mean that's pretty good. Um, have now, have you considered um, – here's another idea that you – I don't know if you've considered, but maybe have you considered um, continuing where you're at, maybe purchasing that property, if it's such a great deal, purchasing that property, right, and just you not utilizing it for the moving company just yet, build up the company in the next two, three years, get it up to about a half million, three-quarter million, and then using that property that, that's down there and then decide to go down there? Is that something that you guys could uh, consider or fathom? Or would it be too much of a financial risk? I mean, that could, I mean, it's not, it wouldn't be because right now on that piece of property, there, um, uh, there, there's actually two houses on that property. It's a 10 acre lot, but there's two, two houses on the property. And right now there's both tenants there. But what it is, is um, the actual the owner of that property is her grandmother. And she basically is like, hey, I'm trying to get rid of this property. We want to give it to you guys. And, you know, obviously go through owner finance, or whatever. But um, so I guess to answer your question, like, I mean, technically we could move forward and then like just rent out those, both those houses. And until we've established enough down here that we can say, hey, you know, we're just going to go move over there, sell our house here. And then we have an operation here good enough that we can have a GM and a couple trucks here. And then we could just move out there and, branch out from there so that that would probably make the most sense logistically like in terms of you know if we were going to make that move so right i i think that would be a smarter idea if it's if it sounds like a really good deal it's a within the family so the family is willing to give you that that thing um i i if it were me and and this was without any other data than what you just gave me that's what i would do i would go hey yeah let's do it and then rent out the properties, hire a, a hire a property manager so you don't have to worry about fixing toilets in the middle of the night, right? Right. Hire a property manager who'll manage it and make sure that the houses are filled up so that you're not worried about that stress. 
and just you know let they'll take a portion of the rent as their as their as their fee you know what i'm saying and they'll right. make sure that it's filled tenants are filled if there's problems they'll make that and that's what i would do right that mm -hmm. that way i got that property so when it does come time in the next two three four years it's there it's ready to go does that make sense yeah, yeah. No, that makes that makes perfect sense all right well i mean that, that does that does answer a lot of our questions because you know we we knew we weren't probably going to be like, yes, it's a fantastic idea. Just go out there and do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we, we, we did expect, I mean, we, cause we even said to ourselves, like, I don't think it's really as feasible as we think it is to go and do that. I mean, we've, we've done our research. We went out to Abilene, which is the closest uh, city that had over a hundred some thousand people. And, you know, we, there's only a few moving companies out there. It's not, it's something we think we could take over that market pretty easily actually. But, um, but no, I mean, that makes a lot more sense. Actually, it's actually, it sounds like a, pretty good idea overall the one you just suggested but um uh i um kind of want to jump in a couple other things that kind of since you know we're, we are still going to be here through the holiday season mm -hmm. and you know obviously you know towards the holiday season it gets a little bit slower for the moving season mm -hmm. um just to kind of give you an idea of like what we're doing for marketing right now i mean we we do have a direct mail cam um campaign we actually use move soon right move yeah. soon so uh to do our direct mail campaign and then um you know, outside of our website, SEO, uh, we do pay for Google Guaranteed, uh, which does pretty well for us. But, um, you know, we've tried a lot of the other stuff like Quote Runner, Billy.com, all that stuff. But we we just we've gotten to the point where, like, we're not um, in order for us to really do successful those leads around here. Like we have to pretty much charge a little to nothing for our services because it's a lot of smaller moves, too. So mm -hmm. um, I guess my you know, my question is now that we're going into the 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 holiday season cl closer to the holiday season what um is there certain trends in moving marketing that we should maybe look into to try to help improve you know getting that extra job or two a week because right now we're like even through the slower time we're we're hitting at least at least 20 jobs a month mm -hmm. um you know from, so about four to five jobs a week you know that we're doing um but i'm basically trying to see if there's maybe something additional we can do like maybe if we whether it's spend a little bit more on google guaranteed or Maybe there's something else I might not even know about that uh, maybe you've seen in the industry that we, maybe you can give some advice on. Yeah, that's a great question. Let me ask you about your postcards. How often are your postcards being sent out? Uh, uh, daily. Daily. All right. Um, how many postcards are being sent out monthly? Uh, I think about a thousand, probably about a thousand-ish. Well, you have the account. Yeah, I, don't, I, 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 haven't, I haven't looked. Um, I just know it gets sent out. The, it'll send out for... Um, anything under or sorry anything over a certain square footage and a certain price range so okay oh, and it, is yeah. that price what what's that price range set? is it set for executive homes or is, is it set for middle income and higher uh, i think it's set for three hundred fifty thousand and higher so it's like middle like middle income and higher homes for the most okay. part you so. might want to lower you might want to lower just for the winter time lower that standard just a little bit okay right um lower that maybe like uh by 50,000 so okay. 300,000 ho homes 300,000 and higher um and i would increase the amount of doing you're in the dw fort worth area you you should you should be killing it you, there's like you got multi of millions of people in that city right mm -hmm. and there's a lot of good neighborhoods that fit that that criteria i you sh i don't understand why you're is it really depressed real estate market there? Um, it's in? not. It, okay. So where we live, like in the DFW area, it's, I wouldn't call it depressed, but it's actually growing. But the thing is like, you know, because there's a lot of areas that are like, you know, outside of the DFW area that are, you know, Hey, you know, people aren't booking, you know, buy as many homes, things like that. So more people are renting I and mean, we understand that, but where we are, it's in Johnson County, which is South Fort Worth. And, that area is actually, we've actually been moving people out of the area because they're like, yeah, this place is growing. It's getting too congested. So people are moving out of that area. But uh, I guess it's one of those things where um, there is a lot of competition, a lot. You know what I mean? Not, I'm not saying they're better competition, but it's just we're competing with a lot of other people. I mean, if you look just movers near me in our area, it's like just fountains of movers. Since, you know, year round, it's not like other areas. Like I'm from the Washington, D.C. area where – we do have pretty harsh winters and a lot of the days it's raining all the time. We're here in Texas. It's 
Mm-hmm. If you have more nicer days and you know warmer days, then you have inclement weather days. You know what I mean? So that, with that mean, there's a lot more people to compete against. Right. Um, and also too, as of late, you know, um, because all summer we've been literally every day booked, like no no problem about game bookings. But it, and this will be our first because we've only had the biz for less than a couple of years. So it's like you know it's a lot of trial and error and learning curves. But mm-hmm. um, like last winter, we didn't spend any money on marketing. We've literally just depended on our website and um, our website and um, Google search and uh, hire helper. Right? We yeah. had, we had hire helper. Um, so, and simple moving labor, stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. and, but, um, so we're, we're, we're doing better than we were at this point last year, just because we've spent a little bit more marketing. We're more reputable. Now we have more ratings on Google and Yelp and so on mm-hmm. and so forth. Um, so it's not like we're, we're dying right now. It's not like we're like under 10 K a month for, you know, during the slower time of the year. It's just, we're just trying to, right. um, and also too, we're, we've been in, increasing our prices, you know, a lot more than when we were this point last year because it used to be we were charged like i mean it got so desperate we were charging 99 dollars an hour for two men in a truck you know it just just so we can get business you know what i mean and mm-hmm. uh, but you know obviously that's not profitable long term so what you know we're, now we're at like for two men in a truck it's like 139 an hour for three men in a truck is 189 an hour so that's pretty um, good that's right about national average so that's pretty good yeah so that so so um but we're kind of noticing the last month a lot of the jobs we're doing and a lot of the calls that are coming in are a lot of very, very small jobs, like, you know, one bedroom, two bedroom apartment moves or, um, you know, not a full house move or there's only certain items moving from a house or just mm-hmm. clearing out the garage. You know, it's just very small moves. It doesn't, mm-hmm. I mean, we haven't had a super, a lot of super long days of moving that we're working eight, 10 hours <laughs> in a day to do a full move, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, so that's um, so we're we're just kind of figure out. I mean, I don't know if that's a market thing right now, and or um, I, you know, I mean, I don't I don't want to make excuses. I just I'm just trying to figure out like why we're out of out of nowhere in the month of September getting these types of calls, and you know, mm-hmm. maybe it's something we should do. Like you said, you know, adjust our direct mail um, by lowering it down to maybe fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars, whatever, and then um, mm-hmm. on top of that, uh, you know. Um, we're, we're just trying to see what we can do to get, you know, better quality leads and for, especially door, towards the, um, the slower time of the year. So, right. Okay, good. So yeah, I would definitely recommend lowering the, the criteria for postcards just for the winter time, right? Lowering it down. You're going to get more, right? Um, two, um, are you guys doing PPC campaigns at all? Are you guys doing any kind of PPC on Facebook, Google, anything like that? Uh, we we were that's what we were trying earlier in the year with the, with the Google ads and um, I mean even even the company that we were working with saying yeah you're really not getting results from this so uh, see that's not true man um, it's the guys who's doing it if they're telling you that they're obviously you should have got rid of them the moment right. they like PPC campaigns work mm-hmm. the problem with PPC campaigns that most people do especially these people that say they know PPC. They don't know PPC. First of all, they're going after the keywords that everybody and their brother are going after, right? Because mm-hmm. they're they're the low-hanging fruit, and they can show you, see, we're getting all these impressions. We're getting these clicks, blah, 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 right? But it, it's like dealing with people on Quote Runner. You know what I mean? How You know, it, you're dealing with everybody and their brother going after those things. What you need to do is you need to go at – you need to go after those keywords that are longer and more specific – to the communities and, and the thing that people are looking at are buyer intent keywords. Yes, mm-hmm. moving is a buyer intent keyword, but usually those keywords, those keywords are usually reserved for people that um, they're just kind of tire kicking, right? They're not necessarily, they're just looking for something, right? They're looking for, and if they come across something great, what people are looking for online are yeah movers near me but they're they're looking for the mo- most affordable movers near me you know what i mean mm-hmm. movers near me is great but you need to qualify that ppc campaign with best movers top movers cheapest movers blah 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 whatever it is right that actually shows buyer intent or what's the best neighborhood in fort worth for kids you know what i mean what's the best what what's the the best 
what's the best schools in Fort Worth, right? Because that's what people are looking for. And that shows people that, hey, we're moving. We're interested in going in there, right? For the most part. And the problem with those keywords is the, a lot of those keywords, long keywords, is that they they don't get a lot of traffic like the big ones that it costs 30, 40, 50, even $100 a pop, right? These ones will get one one hit uh one hit a, a month, right? But if you get 100, 200, 300 of those type of keywords, right? They're going to be really good. Nobody's really going after those keywords, so they're going to be very very cheap, right? But if you got 100, 200, 300 of those keywords, you're getting and they're only doing one a month, that's still 100 to 300 or whatever it is, leads, right, that you really don't have to fight for. Does this make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so what's that? Go ahead. No, I was say, so pretty much we're, we got to look for some keywords that it's not most popularly used in our industry to try to get like, you know, dog movers, kid, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Try yeah. to get. You don't want you don't want like house movers like in there looking about moving a mobile home type thing. Not right? a lot of house like that, yeah. <laughs> right. And see, th those are what you would consider negative keywords. And and if your PPC guy was any good, he didn't know about negative keywords. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's it's a really good if I can it, 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 I'll send you I got your email address. I've got an entire list of those keywords mm -hmm. that about 200 of those two i think it's 100 to 200 of those those really long tail keywords they don't get a lot of hits right right so you might only get 100 200 hits on those keywords but they're very very good they're very they're hard hitting and if somebody's looking for them and they click on your website it, it the, the lead is going to be one cheap and two you're probably the only person that's advertising for those keywords right Okay. Um, and with with and where you're at financially, I'm I'm, I'm only assuming this. I'm assuming that you, you've got a limited marketing budget, right? So going after those big keywords that are good, but they have a lot of competition and they cost a lot, right? Whereas you can go after these keywords and get them for like five bucks, right? Three, four, five bucks. So there's that. Another option, and I find this to be the best option. And hardly anybody's doing this option is uh, YouTube, YouTube shorts, TikTok videos, um, mm -hmm. reels. Those are being very, very popular these days, right? A lot more people are, uh, especially Instagram and Facebook reels, because those are the people that have money. People on TikTok are the younger kids, right? And um, so they don't really have money, but they'd be great for like, um, they're great for uh, the, you know, the the couples that are in an apartment or something like that, right? So you just got to understand your your traffic source. So if you're going to use like TikTok, I would probably gear it towards apartment moves kind of thing. You know what I mean? I wouldn't really do it for big houses. Some of them will have big houses, but the demographics of like TikTok is, you know, probably you know 30 and younger. You know what I mean? 30 is even, probably even pushing it. Probably like 25 and younger versus Instagram or Facebook reels, right? They're, they're going to be like 25 and older, which means most of them have families and houses and stuff like that. Um, so that would be more thing. And that's free, but you've got to do a lot of it. You've got to have like a, like two or three reels a day. You can recycle reels too, right? But I would go and create a bunch of reels of like, like uh, do do some behind the scenes, do some like show your guys in action, some testimonials, right? Get a bunch of collection and, um, you know, and then do it that way, if you know what I'm saying, right? Um, and then, um, and then you guys could, uh, you guys could use those reels and then you just put them on, uh, you know, go and get a software like a uh, Blue Owl or something like that. I forget what it is, but where it just cycles and it just automatically posts for you right? Um, and do that. Another option you need to do is probably go and get your phone, right? You can do it either way. Now you can do it like this or like this and do a, a longer video or, or hire somebody for two, 300 bucks to do like a one minute, two minute, three minute video for you. 
that really highlights your your company and what benefits you do. So I know you guys do some labor only. So you would do a video about labor only. Um, then you do a video about your full service. Then you do a video about your storage and you do a video about packing and unpacking. And then so you'd create a bunch of videos and then you're going to take those videos and then you're going to use Facebook marketing and YouTube marketing. YouTube is very, very cheap when it comes to video marketing. And basically you could choose with YouTube video marketing. You could choose what if somebody goes to your competitor's website. Right. Guess what? That will you you can start targeting your cut your 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 competitors uh, traffic but with through Google videos. So they let's say they go to two men in a truck in your area. Right. Well, now they're going to start getting all before. If you set up your your YouTube videos, they'll they'll go in their area. They'll they'll pop on Chip and Joanna on a YouTube video. And guess what? Your video is going to pop up. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, so your your video pops up. You can also target if uh, real estate, uh, real estate and realtors in your area, if they have a YouTube channel, right? You can target their channel, right? As long as they have enough, if they take ads. So, you know, Joe Cowboy, right? It has a YouTube channel and he's a realtor and he has enough people coming to him. You could get your video in front of his, of his video, right? That shows. Well, that's perfect. That's right along the demographic. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and then, then you could use that keyword list too and make videos about those or, and make videos about uh, the different communities and so on and so forth. Um, and then just have the videos show up. So you can really get niche down targeting. And those those video ads are super uber cheap. I'm talking pennies, you know, dimes of, 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 for are those videos, right? And then you could also target high, high volume, high viewed uh, videos that are popular, you know, or just nationwide. You know, there's a lot of YouTubers in the area like Ryan um i i know he's down in austin but there's a what ian Trayan or something like that he's a youtuber like a mr beast type of youtuber down in austin right people think but that's just it gives you an idea right so you start tacking mommy bloggers you know anybody you know anybody that would have like could uh has any kind of thing to do with the real estate market or moving right and then you can just start high high impact videos right and those those are very very cheap, and it's easy to do a video. You can film, you could get the footage yourself, send the footage off to somebody on Fiverr for a couple, a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, and they could put a little video package together and make a video, edit the video, give it, you know, music and all that good stuff, right? And make a, like a little commercial for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um. Actually, um. I, I don't know if this sounds a little um off the wagon a little bit, but I mean, you know. I know, I know, I know what you're saying in terms of like finding realtors and other like YouTube influencers to try to connect with them, especially if they're close by in our area. But um, how? What, what about in terms of people that um, are in the YouTube space that are in junk removal? Do you think they'll be worth trying to get connected with them? Because the only reason I ask that because there is a a guy that is out of DFW. He's like real popular in the junk removal YouTube space, and I, I was even thinking about reaching out to him at some point to like. Well, I mean, I, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, yeah, if, if, his, if his if his videos are uh, very popular in the area, absolutely, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. you could also you could also target your demographic, so it doesn't matter. It could be somebody from all over the country, right? If someone in Dallas is looking at a video from somebody a, a van life video, right? Mm -hmm. If they're in Dallas or Fort Worth area, and you target the Dallas Fort Worth area, right? You could put your video in front of that that video, right? You could put your ad in front of that video. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. So, yeah. as long, but you want it to be within the realm uh, and scope of moving. So, junk removals, landscapers, you know, um, home improvement, you know, how you know, roof roofers, plumbers. Yeah, anything involving pretty much home services or realty or anything like that. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. 
Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. So anything in that realm, you could start putting your videos in front, right? Doesn't matter how, and then you could, then you could target specific videos. So if you see a video that has tens of thousands or, and, um, of views, right. And they're getting lots of views on it. I would put my video on that video. I put my ad on, on, on top of that video. So they, they pop that video because that video is obviously getting views. I want my video. Boom. You know what I'm saying? So right. they, they stick on, I don't know, they, like Chip and Joanna. Very popular. I know they're in Waco, right? And that's about an hour or two away from you guys or whatever it is, right? But they're very, very huge in that area. You know, they're very popular. People want to go to Magnolia, right? They've got huge YouTube views. I'd put my videos, anybody that's in the Detroit, the, the, the Dallas, Fort Worth area, I'd be putting my, my ad on their videos. So they click on one of Chip and Joanna's YouTube videos. They're seeing my video ad. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do you do you feel that? Um, I mean, I know you're talking about like you know putting the, the shorts on like TikTok and stuff like that, and on YouTube because you're saying you, you know pays in the dollar to put ads in front of certain people's YouTube videos, especially if it's demographic in our area. Mm -hmm. But how about um, what'd you call the the targeted marketing for like Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that? Is there a name for that? What the? I mean, it would just be the Facebook and Instagram ads. Okay, so I guess Facebook, yeah. Instagram ads. So do do you feel strongly with those as well, or is that? It, yeah, I would I'm use Facebook. I, absolutely, I would use Facebook, right? And in in you know and and do a couple of videos, some like this vertical, some horizontal, right? Um, and just vi mix it up a bit. You know what I mean? Find mm -hmm. out and then test out. So I would do one video vertical, one good ver a horizontal, test it, see which one works the best, right? Then, then that becomes your your uh, that becomes your control video. Then test another ad against that control, and then whichever one wins, you take that either stays the control or there's a new control, and then you start testing. And then it just it's a matter of testing and doing, but that's cheap. And Facebook. It's getting more and more not so, but there used to be the time when you could get down so granular with the, the targeting, right? Um, right. You could still do um, lookalike audiences. So if you've kept your email list, right, um, of all the people that you've you've done over the last couple of years, you can uh, you you can up upload that to Facebook, and you can now they can all the people that are connected to them on Facebook, you can start targeting them, right? Also right. with Facebook, you can, uh, anybody that comes, goes to your, your uh, Facebook page will now get targeted, retargeted and so on and so forth. Right. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And then also I would go to, um, I'd go on Facebook and I would, it's sort of like uh, almost a, uh, cold calling, door knocking, but there's a lot of groups on Facebook that are uh, community type Facebook groups, right? Sometimes they're yard sale groups. Sometimes they're just community Facebook, community of groups like Crowley, Texas has probably got a Crowley, Texas Facebook group, right? Somebody runs that. I would start joining all of those community groups and then you don't want to just blatantly advertise because a lot of those groups have uh, have um, rules against that. But there's no reason why you can't go to Jet GPT and have Jet GPT write you out a a, a two thousand word article about how the how to improve your curb appeal, right? And then just you know, copy and paste that onto a, a PDF with say, Hey, if you're in here. Um, so that's something I would suggest you look into and it doesn't cost you a lot to do. Um, you can have jet P jet GPT, write you a book outline. Right. And then it doesn't take another thing that I want to end off with guys is your website's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I love your website. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One of the best I've seen. Two things. One, get rid of that damn social media scroll that you have on the back, on the, along the side that goes up and down. Oh. You do not want people. Do not. You do not want people clicking off of your website. You're losing people when they do that. They go. 
because they they've got they got a the attention span of a goldfish, or worse. Oh, okay, you know I mean? so you're saying like it, it, just make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. You're saying there's a, the scroll that they lean to our social media accounts to take them away from it from which... our website. They don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're, I mean, you could put the the thing that you're saying you're on social media. You just don't want them to be able to click it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't want them going off on Facebook because now they'll go to Facebook, right? Facebook should go to your website. Your website should not go to Facebook, mm -hmm. right? They go to Facebook and now they're doing it. Now they see something. Now they're off like, oh, what's Joe Blow doing? And they're off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it distracts from them. You can definitely have, hey, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, Pinterest, whatever. That's okay. Absolutely. Just don't make it clickable, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely do not have them go to Yelp. No Yelp. Yelp is the worst in the world. Do you know, I don't know. I don't know how they're still in business. Um, second thing, you guys need to do more content. Content on your um, on uh, your website. You should have, especially by now. You've been in business two years. You should a have year had a year and a half. You should have had like nearly a thousand articles on your on your website, right? About the different communities about, you know, you know, the best schools in Crowley, the best schools in Fort Worth, the best schools in, you know, um, I don't know all the neighborhoods of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just know Crowley was one of the things on your, on your <laughs> website, but, um, you know, basically, you know, um, best, uh, best activities for, you know, to do as a family, fa best family activities to do in Crowley, Texas, right? Um, the best places to eat in Fort Worth or in Dallas, you know what I mean? Do a video on them as well, right? Do them both or create a video and then take the video and have it transcribed and turn that into an article, right? Mm -hmm. That's the best way I would do, right? If you go out to eat to a, a barbecue place, right? Do a review on it. Say, you know, do a video while you're doing, while you're eating. Hey, we're here. Hi, we're just Ken Dean. Um, and we're at uh, the Texas Roadhouse here, and uh, we're eating a sirloin steak. I've got sirloin steak. Jessica ordered. She ordered the flay Milan. And oh, we're eating. Oh, my God. This is the most tenderest stuff. Of, you know what I mean? And just do a review, right? And then you go and take it to rav.com. They'll transcribe that. That goes on. Now that goes on as an article on your website. So not only that, you got a video, and then you got a thing. I don't care if they get a lot of videos, but what you want is a lot of people going and the more articles you do about your community and about tips and about how to do it and not just about moving but just in general the more seo you're going to get the more people come into your website so on and so forth i'll just give you an example i did an article one time on my website had nothing to do with moving it was the top 40 places in lansing that you didn't know about or something like that forget the, the article yes yeah, so and again you could get a, a virtual assistant to do the content Right. Or you could use chat GPT. It doesn't have to be great content. It just needs to be good and useful and something that, you know, um, and when I send you that list of keywords, right. Um, you can use that list of keywords as ideas and titles and headlines and stuff. Right. Oh. That'll be a great thing for SEO content as well. Um, and I'll try to get that to you sometime today. Um, but it, it's just hustle guys. You got to get out there and do, you know, um, do what, do what worked and not what, you know what I mean? I understand during the summertime, you don't have time. I get it. But now you do, and it's time to get out there and hustle again. Yeah, no, I feel you. All right, guys, anything else? I think, I think, I think yeah, I, go ahead. no, I think we've, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you've covered a lot above and beyond what I was even thinking about. So I really, like I said, I really appreciate everything. Um, <clears throat> I guess um, I'm just trying to see if there is. Anything on my notes here? Um, oh, the paper click. I mean, should should we try to do the paper click like on our own and try to? Because I, I'm I have no idea how to do the paper click stuff, and I, I know I did it previously with some. I know, but I, I just I just didn't know if like if, is this something we need to outsource, or do you think we can like, once we get the keywords, we can figure it out ourselves, kind of thing? I'm a I'm a guy that says you should uh, you should hire somebody to do that. Let me get you, but if you want to do it on your own, there's a guy Ben Heath. Heath, like H E A T H. Yep. Okay. Go to Ben Heath. He does uh, Facebook ads and he's got a couple of channels. One is about PPC, Google PPC, and then he has one about Facebook ads. Okay. Right. 
I, I would I would do both of those um, channels, and he will teach you A to B, right? I think he has a course, but if you want to pay for the course, by all means, do so. But he will teach you how to do Facebook ads as well as Google ads. But you're going to be sitting in, you know, consider it like a college course because this guy will go th very thoroughly. Um, so if you're going to do it yourself, he's the guy. He, not only that, he will – I don't know how much he charges, and he is over in England, but you maybe reach out to him. Maybe he'll do your stuff for you because mm -hmm. okay. he knows his shit. The, other, the guy who was telling – I don't know. Don't tell me the name. I don't want to badmouth him, but the guy who was telling me that what he was telling you guys, this just tells me he doesn't know what he's frigging doing. Well, we, we had a really – I mean, in my opinion, it was a very bad experience. Uh, um, you know, and uh, what was it? Because what it was, like, you know, we, we first were just doing just – general um just general ads and we're like for, for, yeah. for, for moving it wasn't like we were doing anything specific we were just like just a general ads for it and weren't we spending like it was something like a thousand dollars a week like, or something like that yeah we're and spending we, like four grand a month on these and got yeah no it got, like we got no results and then like we we're like hey man like you know we're not really happy about how this is going and he's like oh and so like one of the things that we, we're known for uh at least what we're known for down here is is uh gun safe moving you know because a lot of guns safes are being sold and need to be moved around and not a lot of companies around here even though there's a lot of gun safes around here not a lot of moving companies want to move them on you know unless they're under 300 pounds but some of these we're moving are like 800 a thousand pounds i moved one that's 1800 pounds so but anyways basically like long story short the pay-per-click guy guy we were like hey look we would like to get more gun safe moves because those are a lot more profitable than you just your normal apartment house moves in general because it's less work and more money in our pockets you know so um we tried that out and uh i think we got like two calls and we still ended up spending like an exuberant amount of money several for, thousand yeah yeah for, just just for those two calls from it you know and we just and they even they showed us the whole graph and you see like we didn't get any traction from any of the stuff they were doing and you know and they were like well it's not supposed to work this way you're supposed to give it some time it's like well dude i mean not with ppc ads with seo yes yeah, SEO, SEO, yes. But PPC? No, that he's he's full of he, he's full of shite. <laughs> he's full of shite. Um although I will say this, I didn't see any uh pages on your website. You could correct me if I'm wrong about your specific services other than labor only and full service. So, gun safe. I didn't see like a landing page just for gun safes. There is one. There is uh, one. Yeah, yeah. If you go to services, there should be one that says gun safes on there. Um, and uh, how many words is how many words of content is on that page? I think, I think it's about eight hundred. I could definitely add some stuff to it, but yeah. Yeah, you want to you want the landing page to be just about nothing but gun safes, mm -hmm. just gun safes, right? You know what I mean? Right. And, yeah. Uh, good, clever, benefit-rich headline, right? And talk about how you guys move gun safes. Some, if you got testimonials about just moving gun safes, put those up, right? If you got a video, put the video up. But you want to have like about a thousand to two thousand words mm -hmm. on that thing, just for that landing page, right? Yeah. Um, you could have your quote form, you know, your little quote thing on it, that which is kind of cool. I like that, and it's all above the fold. So you did a great job, Jessica. Just going to say, it's a beautiful page. Thank you. Um, but you could have that make the header a little bit smaller, but just really benefit rich headline. Right. Um, like you say, you know, if, if moving a gun, say were easy, your, your boyfriend would do it or something, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> or, or some, something funny, but that's benefit rich. That's going to get them. Um, just create that. And then wh why, you know, you know, here's our service. Here's, this is what you're, you know, Here's step one, step two, step three of our how how we move the services. Here's how we do it. This is what we come with. Blah blah blah. And just base any questions they would have about moving a gun safe, you would answer on that, right? Right. And then uh, it that's all the page is about, just gun safes, right? And um, that's what I would do in every service you did. I don't care how small. If you got if you got you know, picking up dog crap out of a backyard service, you create a page just for that and make it a real landing page that looks and acts like a website, right? And if right. you really want to get fancy, you would go get a URL URL specifically for that, right? Right. So you go, 
gun safe moving DFW, right? You know, or, you know, Dallas gun safe moves, movers, you know, Fort Worth gun safe movers. And then those, then you can just target, use those URLs, one, to track your conversions and find out where, who, who and where they're coming from. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then, um, so, and that way you can, you can track it, but that's getting fancy. That's the thing. But just start putting a lot more content, just blog content. You know, think of these vloggers that do vlogs about their life. You know what I mean? That's kind of, you don't want to vlog about your life. You can, you can put things, but just what would people want to know about Fort Worth or Dallas or Crowley or, you know, um, whatever else is up there, a Palisade or whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever, and then every community should have its own landing page. Every service should have its own landing page. Everything, and I'm talking when I'm talking every community. I'm talking, you got there's a lot more communities in Dallas, Fort Worth than just what you have on your website. Yeah, right. But everybody should have a a, a page. You know what I'm saying? A, their own landing page, and if you can, go and get a URL that's SEO rich for that thing. So, like Crowley, Texas. I'd go best tax, best Crowley, Texas movers, to, uh, movers near Crowley, Texas. You know what I mean? And if you can get those URLs or things like it, you know what I mean? Or the top, top mover in Crowley, Texas, and then just create URLs for them. I mean, I had, I, when I had my moving, con I had a list of almost 500 different URLs to my website. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, URLs are cheap. Yeah, yeah, I guess with those, sorry, I guess my question would be with those URLs, um, would they have their own landing pages on their URLs or would you just use them to redirect the main website and you the page on the website? Can, well, you should have a landing page with that URL and that you that landing page would be linked to your main main page. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then un, under that under that landing page, there would be blog posts that would be directed to that service page or community page or whatever. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Makes sense. yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can think of it of like a pyramid. So every landing page is the top of the pyramid. And then there'd be blog posts that just direct all the way up. They would direct to each other and direct to that. And they all link back to that landing page. Then that landing page directs back to your, your main site. So just think of it as a pyramid, right? Yeah. And the more posts you can do, on the even uh, even with the most obscure keywords right the better because mm -hmm. even if those keywords just bring you one person a month that's one person that you that's one person you get thousands of webs you got thousands of pages and they bring each of those bring one mm -hmm. you're 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 talking hundreds if not thousands of leads free right that you're not having to pay for and or compete with um, mm -hmm. does this make sense yeah, yeah. right and now that's a long-term strategy but it is a strategy that you should go to right and if you need the help to do it you should go and get somebody to do it because that's you know and now i'm going to give you come and le lean in a little closer don't we don't want to tell anybody here's another thing you can do you could create now a website for moving companies a different moving company. So you can give a, you guys got Ajax, then you could go checkmate moving company, right? You could do a, a blooming great thing or prime rib moving company, whatever, give it funny freaking names and create websites on those. And guess what? Those websites all link back to you. So now your competitors are actually you, you guys online. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I did that with, I did that with like, I had three different websites for my city, three different websites mm -hmm. that were all ranking in the top 10 on Google. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause I would just take, I would just take an article that I wrote for my, my main website. Right. Just change. I would just take the content, change it around, just change it around, upload it to one of those new sites. So my sites had thing. And guess what? <clears throat> all of those ancillary or, sneaky little ones they're all directed to my main site so mm -hmm. if they called up prime rib movers right 
Hello, Jay, you say moving the storage. How may I help you? Oh, is this prime rib movers? Yes, that's that's a that's one of our um uh our our other companies, but yes, you got them. How can I help you? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then then you're not it just and it basically pushes out your competition, right? And forces all the people to come to you. Mm -hmm. Right? Because most people are only 95% of everybody who, who before they call you go to your website. Does this make sense? Yeah. So if you've got two, three, four, five websites out there, there's a better chance that you're going to get that customer versus two men in a truck or all my sons or college mm -hmm. hunks, you know what I'm saying? That just have one website. And on college hunks and two men and all these franchises, they just got a page on their website. You know what I mean? They don't have all that blog stuff. Their site's only ranking high because they've got a national uh, uh you know what I mean? But you could easily outrank the, their one page and mm -hmm. just push them out, right? It's so easy. SEO is so easy if you don't do it, right? Just a side note, that's a little sneaky tactic. That's a that's a, an advanced tactic for down the road. Mm -hmm. Right now, just concentrate on the, the stuff that you can control, right? Okay. But it's just something you might want to put in your wheelhouse and for later on. Okay, great. All Thank right. you. Awesome. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. If you got anything, feel free to book another call. I, I apologize for the technical thing. Um, <laughs> I, I, I did not realize I was on my free account, but apparently I was. And so I had to put you on my other account. But uh, we got it going. So, uh, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you. And I'll get you that that list here hopefully sometime today, okay? Oh, I appreciate great. it. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.